right, so you guys are getting ready to do a research unit in social studies. And with social studies, there's a whole lot of research involved just in the general topic itself, okay? Because everything happened in the past, right? So you have to find out and figure it out and read it and things like that. Um, just like in ELA class, how you had to do a research project, you had to find all of these sources, right? For your ELA class. However, your goal was to make a project. And your goal for this class is not to make a project. Your goal is to analyze and critically think about the sources that you are going to be using for research. Okay? So you are going to be given a sheet that has all kinds of different topics on it first. And that sheet, I don't know where it went. Oh, here it is. Okay. You're going to give, first you're going to be given this. And you're going to be told to look for five different sources, okay? And two of them have to be print, and three of them can be from wherever you find sources from. They just have to be reliable ones. Then, on the back, there's a list of topics. And you are going to be assigned a topic or you choose a topic that will be Mr. Russell's discretion. But within that topic, you guys will need to think about what interests you. Like if you're somebody who's really into weapons, you might do your research all on weapons, the weapons of the Renaissance. Or if you're really into art, you might decide to do a specific artist. Uh, maybe you're uh, really into uh, martial arts, you might decide to do the samurai or something like that. Okay, so you're going to find something that interests you so that you're not boring yourself to tears. Okay? That's what every social study researcher does. They find a topic that they really are interested in and they love. Okay, then you're going to be given a graphic organizer. And with that graphic organizer, you are going to write down the source information that you, where you got your information from. And then you are going to critically analyze and talk about why that source would be important for a research project of that topic. Does that make sense? All right. So we have to talk about things that, where you can find these reliable resources. So you're going to go to Mr. Russell's home page on the middle page, and you're going to go all the way down to the bottom. And you're going to look for my face. And then you're going to click on me. And that will take you to my Moodle page. The other way to get to my Moodle page is you can go to junior high web page and click on my branch. And you're going to look for my cute little face again. There I am. And you're going to scroll up till my face is no longer there because I don't want to look at it right now. Okay. And then here we have research resources, which I've collected for you. And then we also have some links that are going to be very useful to you. Now, if you were in Ms. Beer's class, this pearl tree box right here, this should be something very familiar to you because that's how she, I collected things for her, and that's what she did with her middle page. So, same thing. You're going to find all of those websites there. We really need to be talking about these right here. World Book Online and MoreNet are two online databases that we have subscriptions to. When I say we, I mean K Public Schools. Um, so we pay for them. They better have accurate information or we're going to fire them. All right? Do you guys remember back, way back in like third, fourth grade when you guys were in library and you went to library once a week? You guys had lessons and the librarian would pull out those volumes of books, one through like 24, and it would be A through C in the encyclopedias, and together those books would make a really cool picture like a tiger or the world or something like that. Okay. So World Book is the publishing company for those encyclopedias. And they were like, hey, everybody's going digital. We should too. We should quit making these books because the librarians are going to quit buying them, and we should put everything online. So that's why we have World Book Online. So it's technically like having those encyclopedias but in your name. Okay. But with the resources for going on, we get to make sure that we now have websites, we have primary sources, we have maps, we have all kinds of things that we can put into it. All right, so one of the things that you need to do is have a primary source for this research project. So we're going to click on World Book Online and I'm going to show you how to do find primary sources. Get it open and you're going to click on advanced. And it will eventually appear. Okay. Here it is. 
All right. Now, what's great about this is it's going to have all kinds of information, but I want to take you into advanced search. And let's say that you had to do, you picked the Renaissance, and you were going to do your research project on the Renaissance, specifically Leonardo da Vinci, okay? But you think to yourself, well, the Renaissance would probably be a really good primary source. I could talk about the Renaissance and see what I can come up with. So in here on the left side, we have all these things that are checked, encyclopedia articles, primary sources, online books. So the first thing I want to do is click on uncheck all. And then I want to just click primary sources because that's all I'm looking for right now. And then I'm going to type in the Renaissance. And then click search. And then you'll notice that primary sources is up here. And then I have all of these things to choose from. Now, your job is to critically analyze the sources that you choose. You have to choose five of them. Are you going to find the right one right away? Maybe, maybe not. You're going to actually have to read. It's going to have to happen. So I'm going to look at these things. Painting of the Sistine Chapel. While I'm doing something on art, that seems like it would fit perfectly for me. So, oh, my, Michelangelo was the painter of the Sistine Chapel. Maybe I won't do Leonardo da Vinci anymore. Maybe I'll go with Michelangelo. But this is what you're going to be doing today, thinking about where you're going. So I'm going to use my skimming skills because there's no way I want to read that whole thing. I mean, I like social studies, but seriously, come on, that's a lot of text. So I'm going to skim through it, make sure I can find some things that I want to use, that I can tell Mr. Russell why I'm using it, find some good quotes in there, and then I need to cite my source if I found that this is something that I actually want to do. So there, on the bottom of everything World Book does, they tell you how to cite your information. So it's always going to be there, and that's what I would copy, put that in my graphic organizer, and then I would tell him how I was going to use this article. Maybe I would have a quote in there and tell him why I was going to do it. Understand? Okay. Going back up, just click on World Book itself. Let's just say I put in Renaissance right here. And then I click Search. Now you'll notice that there are encyclopedia articles, there's those primary sources again, there's online books, there's all kinds of things that you can find there. There's maps and tables and a dictionary item, all kinds of things to help you find reliable sources. Now, can you do all of your research here in Worldbook? No, you can't, because you need five different sources. These are good starting grounds. Now, I might be able to go to websites, there's 12 of them. Maybe those websites would be other good sources that would help me through. I could find a primary source here. I could find an online book and I could find an encyclopedia article, but you're gonna have to look in other places. So now we're gonna go back to my Moodle page and we're gonna go to MoreNet. MoreNet has all kinds of research centers, but we're specifically going to look at the Student Research Center. And in here, I can get access to magazine and newspaper articles that World Book might not necessarily have access to. They're also going to have other primary source documents. So I'm going to type in Renaissance up there and click search. And then it's going to tell me that there's 34,000 items that have to do with the Renaissance. That's a lot. I specifically, though, I'm only looking for biographies, yeah, I've decided that I really just want to do it on a person from the Renaissance. So I might click on the biographies button. And then now I know that there's 534, so I can look for a couple of things. And maybe if I go through, it'll help me narrow it down so that way I can just keep narrowing and narrowing my search. Okay, there's also primary sources, and then maps. There's only two maps, but it's still gonna it's gonna definitely point me towards Italy. So that's important. Okay. All right. What else? Go back to the Moodle page. All right. Now let's talk about the pearl trees. If you click on actual words research resources, it will open up that pearl. And here are the things that I've collected. Now, World Book and the MoreNet things are there, but they're kind of persnickety on pearl trees, so that's why I linked them directly into my Moodle page. So 
up here, I want you guys to notice Sweet Search. Go ahead. In Sweet Search, I want you to see that this says a search engine for students. Now, you guys are getting ready to do a research project. This search engine is created for students to do research projects. Or you can go to Google. Google was created to make money. Now, they're going to give you lots of awesome and wonderful resources because Google is amazing. But the difference is, is that if I type in the Renaissance with Google, I'm going to get about 5 million website chosen. If I type in Renaissance with Sweet Search, I'm going to get about 20. Okay? 20 versus 5 million. I don't want to spend all day doing research. Do you? No. No? You don't. Okay? I only have like 40 minutes to get one source, a good source. So make sure that you're going to the search engine for students. All of those websites are going to be reliable for you to use. All right. Close out of that. Then I want you guys to notice the Library of Congress. I also want you to see right here where it says LOC.com. If I click on that, it will take me to the actual website. Library of Congress is like the largest library in the world. And they are going to have all good resources for you. So that's another really good one. So I've given you three really good sources to go find information. Okay. And then Sweet Search is a good search engine to find further information. Okay. Any questions? I know that's a lot of database information. Yes, we'll be. Okay, let's talk about Wikipedia. Um, Wikipedia is amazing. I go on Wikipedia almost every day. Specifically, like when I hear you guys talking about different things that I'm not as familiar with. Like a couple of years ago, Chief Pete came on the scene and he was huge. <laughs> and so I had to know who he was because everybody was talking about him. So I would go to Wikipedia and I would type in things like that, and then I get to know information, right? Yeah. <laughs> Don't quote Wikipedia, all right? Not for research. It's great for every day, just like Google is great for every day. Yes. Can we use the websites they got their information from, like at the bottom? Yes, absolutely. I definitely recommend that. Cool. And I really recommend you go to WorldBook and see what kinds of websites they recommend and go there and check it out. Okay. The thing about research is that it usually takes you down these little rabbit holes. Like you go and you like follow this link and then you go to this link and then you go to this link. And but you're always the most important thing is that you're always analyzing information, always analyzing it and making sure that it's accurate information and not just believing it because you're reading it. Okay. 